we've talked about filament and taking care of it and so forth. I had different bags and stuff that I would use. But I've got this Ziploc bag right here. And I've purchased a lot of these because when you put filament in them, like here's a stack of leftover spools of black filament. They fit in here almost perfectly. There's no vacuum seal on this. They just fit that tight. So there's really no air other than what would normally be there if you had a vacuum seal bag. So I like these bags. And also if you notice on here, I don't know if you can see, but uh, like 141, 120, 152, 120, 111. That is how many grams are left on each one of those spools of that black PLA. And the way I do that, I have this scale over here and I just simply turn it on, have it on grams. And then if I have a spool with some filament that it is left over after printing the jobs, then I'll take that spool. And if it's this type of spool, I put this one on, get my tear weight. And then when I put the spool on that has the filament on it, it'll show that it has 132 grams or something like that. And I'll write 132 on that spool. And then when I put it in a bag with the rest of the black, I'll put on there how many grams that is. And the way that helps me is that then I have all these spools up here. And I'm not just guessing at how much is in them. If I have a job that's running, like this one right here that needs 234 grams to print, then I can go to one of these spools up here, and I see this one has 266 in it. So I could take that spool there and use it over here and then I'd have about 20 something grams left on it after that and I could use that for some test printing or some individual small parts that I might be printing so that's the way I kind of manage a lot of that and of course some of you have seen the videos where I have the filament counter and I still use the filament counter but not as much because when I'm running these parts, I'm usually running, let's say this one has 227 grams. Well, I'll put new spools on there and I'll know I can run that job four consecutive times. And four consecutive times will give me a little bit less than a thousand grams used. So there'll be a little bit left on the spool. But I'll go ahead and do that and run it four times. And then what's left on the spool gets weighed, calculating the filament that's left on it, how many grams of filament. And then it goes up there on the shelves. Then the next time I'm getting run a job, if I'm just going to run a single job, or if I want to use up some of those spools of filament up there, and I see that one of these things is going to use, uh, let's see what we've got down here, 167 grams, then I can take and use that black PLA if there's 175 grams left on the spool, I can run this job with it. Or if there's only a, about, let's say, 75 grams left, I could run this 68 gram job. This uh, part takes 68 grams. This one takes 53. And so on. So I guess that's the way I would say that I manage my filament usage.
and try to get the most efficient use out of the filament and use up these leftover spools. But when you have a whole lot of them that are down around 43 or 32 or 18 grams, there's not a whole lot you can run with that. I use that when I'm trying to set up a printer and do some test printing or something on it where I don't need to print the whole job. Okay, this job is just finished. This is the base for the helping hand tools. And if you notice on here, it ran five hours, 36 minutes, and used 68 grams of filament. Okay, on the spool, I'll pull the spool off and let you look at it. You see here the spool had 73 grams on it. And you can see how much is left. So that's a fairly efficient way of using the filament that's left on these spools knowing how many grams are there and that if you use 68 and there's 73 on the spool you should have about five grams left and i'm assuming that's about what that is we could weigh it and see but it's a pretty accurate way of keeping track of whether or not you have enough filament to uh, finish printing the part so that one's finished and of course these will be tomorrow we'll check them tomorrow this one just finished here this was a test prototype part and they've already cooled down enough i like to do a drop test every once in a while see how well they're built uh, like i said we did these in blue because we don't normally print these on the aids but if they come out and they work, the little switch screw holes line up and everything works good on them, then we know we'll be able to print them on the A8 with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Okay, these lap diners will be printing now. We'll see how they do tomorrow. They should be finished and ready to be restarted tomorrow. Same as these other parts around here that we're printing. Now, right now, we've got about 27 printers in here running. And if you look here, we're drawing about 10, 9, 10, 12. It varies the amperage because different printers are turning on the heat elements at different times. But you can look at this for a few minutes and see that the average is somewhere around 9 amps jumps up to 11 or 12 every once in a while goes down to about eight so roughly around nine amps let's say average now that's on one leg and then on the other leg it looks like we're averaging about five six seven about six amps so you add those two together and you have about 15 amps so None of the lights in here are on that panel. That panel is supplying power only to the printers. So these 27 printers that are in here running right now are drawing a total of whatever I said, I think I said about 16 or 17 amps. So that gives you an idea of power consumption when they're running. Of course, if we were in a preheat mode with all of these printers, it would jump up quite a bit higher but once they're running those elements are cutting on and off and cycling and that keeps the overall demand pretty reasonable so technically I guess you could say that we could run 27 printers on a 20 amp circuit that would be a heavy load on it drawing 17 amps and sometimes peaking up around 18, 19, or 20 itself. You wouldn't want to do that, but technically you could. Just on this wall alone here, I have 80 amp capacity because I have four 20 amp circuits. I'm just using a fraction of the power that I have distributed in this room. But even at that, I've got to watch my amperage 
because in this building I have a limited amount of power from the panel that I'm getting the power from so I don't want to exceed those limits and when I built the adjacent assembly area we do a lot of soldering and different work over there we can start drawing some power over there from time to time so it's kind of a balance but at this point 27 printers and to be honest I don't run much more than 27 to 30 printers at a time over here because like I mentioned some of these printers are dedicated to only running when I need a certain part if the website really blew up tomorrow and people started ordering everything on that list in quantities I probably would have to fire up every printer in here to keep up but there's a lot of capacity here and I don't see a problem with that so until the next time happy printing from new tech inventors <laughs>